former chairman of the National Association of Software and Services Companies and former CEO of Emphasis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the panel. It is my honor to represent the leadership, staff, and member companies of the National Association of Software and Service Companies of India before this commission. We are the Chamber of Commerce of the Indian IT industry. My name is Jerry Rao. I'm right now chair of the NASCOM Foundation, and I've been a past chairman of NASCOM, and a businessman with experience leading both Indian and American companies. Uh, NASCOM president, Mr. Chandrasekhar, regrets that he could not be here. I hope I will be more than adequate substitute. We appreciate the opportunity to present the facts and perspectives to the ITC on how trade investment and industrial policies in India have a positive effect on the U.S. economy, especially through the pivotal and fast-growing area of information technology. With more than 1,500 members, NASCOM is one of the largest technology-focused trade associations in the world. We have grown to represent many U.S. and other foreign-based companies who want to do business in India, as well as India's IT sector. NASCOM's core program, Center in Industry Development, Workforce Development, Global Trade and Policy Advocacy. It's in the last two areas that are the focus of my testimony. From its founding 25 years ago, NASCOM has served as an influential agent of change, helping to open more doors for American companies to invest and do business in India. Frankly, we believe this would help India's young IT sector, and it did, while also providing trade and investment opportunities for well-established world leaders in IT from the US and other nations. As a result, bilateral trade, commercial relationships, and investments in IT enterprises are an especially bright spot in US-India relations. In fact, it is a great partnership, growing exponentially in both directions. In India, 10 out of the top 15 tech companies are American-based. According to the Office of the US Trade Representative, US direct investment in India is led by information, technical, professional, scientific sectors. US foreign direct investment in India was $27.1 billion in 2010, a 30 percent increase from 20 to 2009. Sales of services in India by majority U.S. owned affiliates were $13.1 billion, while sales of services in the United States by majority Indian owned firms was $7.2 billion, clearly a balance in favor of the United States. In fact, the fast growing Indian market for IT is dominated by companies from the US and other foreign countries. As a corollary, I might add that I sold my company five years ago to a US company, and they've done very well. Their share price has more than doubled, so I sold them something nice. With growth from 17% from 2011 to 2012, US and other foreign businesses captured 84% of India's domestic market for IT hardware, 84% for software, and 63% in overall IT and business process outsourcing. American companies appearing in the top 20 of those operating in India include HP, IBM, Ingram Micro, Cisco Systems, Oracle, Intel, Dell, and Microsoft. An increasing number of US businesses in the IT sector are benefiting from the opportunity to reach the growing marketplace of India. American business also has benefited from a steadily increasing number of partnerships between US and India-based technology companies, leading to cost reductions, increased speed to market, access to new markets, and ultimately more jobs for Americans. This growth of the foreign and domestic IT sector in India has produced a significant multiplier effect on the nation's economy, resulting in more opportunities for other US providers of goods and services. Education, training, and employment by American, other foreign and Indian companies has helped to create a very strong middle class population. It's a very low income middle class by US standards, but it's counted as 400 million in India, and it's a pretty big chunk of people. Nearly 65% of India's population is under the age of 35. This growing affluent youthful population is attracted to American brands 
and suppliers, ranging from Apple to Burger King to Taco Bell. The substantial progress in opening India's growing market to American IT companies and expanding bilateral business relationships is not new and not by chance. We firmly believe that a rising tide lifts all, all boats. So NASCOM and India's own IT industry have served as persistent advocates for free trade and free investment flows, becoming a particularly strong pro-US lobby in India. We have campaigned for zero to low duties on hardware and software. We have fought for 100% foreign direct investment to be allowed in the IT sector. We have lobbied for fair treatment and tax policies affecting foreign entities as well as India's IT sector. I'll come a little bit later on some tax policies. The government of India, in fairness, has responded with policies that have created a fairly wide range of opportunities in the domestic market for US and other foreign IT companies. Software technology parks were established in the 90s. Economic reforms and trade liberalization policies encouraged foreign participation. The government of India also provided fiscal incentives and liberalized norms. From 2001 onwards, progressive reform has continued with regular review and easing of fiscal and procedural issues on taxes, duty exemptions, and gradual removal of restrictions on overseas investment. These reforms have continued through the past few years, including steps with the government of India to reduce difficulties in the tax environment, including measures on transfer pricing and direct taxes and general avoidance rules or guard provisions. On, tax, on transfer pricing in particular, NASCOM would like to take some credit. I think we worked very hard with the Indian government uh, to convince them to reverse certain ideas that were floating, which we have thought were inappropriate for US as well as Indian companies. Uh, coming in here, Mr. Chairman, I just read today's journal and I noticed that the IRS has just lost a case in the US courts um, where they were trying to use some civil war legislation uh, to go after tax preparers in the United States. Uh, the Indian Income Tax Department is fairly similar. They go very aggressively against uh, uh, industries, both Indian-owned and foreign-owned. On that, they are not discriminatory. But we are trying to improve our dialogue with the executive branch of the Indian government to minimize some of these aggressive positions. One initiative that started last July, which we work closely with the India's Ministry of Finance, is to do weekly forums where they engage with industry associations, chambers of commerce, um, and on tax-related and tax issues and tax disputes. Uh, we are a very active participant there, and we have worked very hard to work to improve the business environment in terms of not only tax transfer pricing matters, but also revising preferential market access policy, changing special economic zone rules to increase investor interest and boost trade, and legislation to increase foreign direct investment in multi-brand retail, aviation, and telecommunications. In yet another area of concern, India has joined the US and other nations in raising the importance of cybersecurity related awareness, training, and protection for public and private sectors, including US and other foreign businesses operating in India. In my written sub uh, testimony, details of the actions that NASCOM is pursuing in this area have been included. From the beginning, going back 25 years, we have been very strong advocates of intellectual property protection. Reduction of software piracy has been a key priority. One of the awareness campaigns we con conducted, a former president of NASCOM conducted more than 10 years, 15 years ago, was to organize a special event in central Delhi where a lot of pirated software was brought into the middle of town. And he brought an elephant and had the elephant stamp the pirated software in order to create public awareness that this was not something that people should indulge in. Through concerted actions that included awareness, evangelization, legislations, and enforcement, software piracy has come down from 2004 levels of 74% to 63% in 2011, based on the Washington DC-based Business Software Alliance figures. This compares to China's rate of 73% and a global average of 42%. Piracy is directly correlated with licensed software market in India, 
which can, continues to grow between 8 and 10 percent, and it's at $3.61 billion, according to our data. India's software market is dominated primarily by U.S. providers and other foreign providers, with India's government and corporate sectors driving demand. With the encouragement from NASCOM and India's IT sector, Government of India has taken some steps to raise awareness and improve enforcement of intellectual properties in the IT industry. The ETI has a standard detailed project report template to, all, to assist all central ministries and state governments for formulating various project proposals related to e-governance. This includes detailed guidelines on software asset management, including provision for audit and compliance to reduce infringements. The Central Bureau of Investigation has identified violations of intellectual property rights as one of 12 areas of focus for the Economic Defenses Division, along with banking fraud, smuggling of narcotics, and cyber crimes. NASCOM companies have helped India's patent office finally establish a modernized e-filing service. It came into place in 2012. It has offices in four cities, and you can file patents electronically, digitally in <coughs> India today. Uh, we're also working with 30 of India's states and federal territories to have copyright enforcement cells and special cells in crime branch to investigate copyright offense in cases, including trying to improve training for policemen, public prosecutors, and judges. One result of all of this is that US and other international companies are very comfortable collaborating with Indian partners on key R&D and design functions, knowing that their intellectual property rights will be respected. <coughs> Today, it would be hard to find any American IT startup in the Silicon Valley or elsewhere in the US that does not use the resources of Indian IT partners for R&D purposes. As the world's largest democracy and a stabilizing influence in a troubled region of the world, India is a natural strategic partner of the US. It's also an attractive trade and investment partner with an educated workforce, competitive labor costs, a domestic market which is enamored with American cars, clothes, cinema, and technologies. As poverty is reduced, the internet spreads across the vast nation, and more locales bloom as the economic growth centers, the, the opportunities for exporting goods and services will continue to expand. Of course, even with this substantial progress, there is more that can be done and should be done to realize its potential as a trading partner and investment destination. India needs to take further actions to enhance the business environment, get consistency, particularly in taxes, develop infrastructure, advance the factors of production, improve the taxation system, and ease the remaining barriers to foreign direct investment and increase awareness about emerging cities and regions. And we as NASCOM are determined to play a role in furthering this cause. India's IT sector can help by advocating for continued progress and serving as a model for other business sectors demonstrating how the economies and jobs in both India and the US can benefit from liberalized trade, investment, and tax policies, along with the appropriate protection of intellectual property. NASCOM and our member companies will continue to work closely with the government of India to build this case. <coughs> now, coming to the US side, we hope that Congress and the administration will show patience and restraint. For example, the discriminatory provisions on temporary visas for high-skilled workers in Senate Bill 744 and a similar bill introduced in the House of Representatives would seriously disrupt relationships between thousands of US companies and their long-standing IT service partners, many of which are based in India. So we hope that when Congress resumes consideration of the important subject of immigration reform, there will be bipartisan support for reform that addresses America's growing needs high-skill talent in computing and other fields, allows U.S. companies to choose their business partners as suppliers, and supports a growing and mutually beneficial trade and commercial relationships between the U.S. and India. IBM, Accenture, Microsoft, Google, and other American companies are considered attractive, just well, yeah. attractive employers by hundreds of thousands of bright Indian students. 
It behooves the U.S. government to cultivate this pro-U.S. population. I would argue uh, that back in 2009, President Obama's speechwriters got it wrong when they wrote that business should be supported in Buffalo rather than Bangalore. Indeed, as leader of the free world, the U.S. president should be supporting the creation of jobs in Buffalo and in Bangalore. Truly a win-win approach. Bangalore is probably the most pro-American city outside the United States. And if you visit Bangalore or Bhutan, you will see millions of square feet of office space filled with U.S. branded IT equipment. The fact is the U.S. and India IT sectors have decades of history in mutually beneficial symbiotic relationships. We hope we can carry this strategic relationship forward, especially in this year of new elections in India and midterm elections in the United States. We hope that reason will prevail over rhetoric in both countries. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Our final